Hi, Shemini. Welcome to your October reading. We are in the full swing of Mercury retrograde and you may be feeling like you've already made a couple of mistakes. You were open to too much. You were receptive to the wrong things. You've let too much slide and now you feel the weight of it. Don't worry, don't blame yourself. It's okay. It's all right. As every Mercury retrograde is, it's a learning, a teachable moment, a study in what to not say, what to not do, what to not worry about, and what to celebrate. You have Mars in Libra, fellow air sign, and it wants you to be petulant. It wants you to be intractable. It wants you to speak from your pride and cause yourself many, many losses. The ego prefers certain losses because then you become isolated. And when you become isolated, the ego becomes stronger. The lack of connection feeds the ego. Because then it says to you, see, I was right. I'm the only one you can count on. But Mars and Libra also gives you all the charisma, all the attention. You can have what you want. You can win over whoever you want. But when it comes to the really important things, if you don't compromise and your ego takes over and you want it all, it all has to be mine or I don't want anything, then you won't get anything. Compromise or lose. Now your ego doesn't like those odds, but we're not here to satisfy our ego. We, of all the signs, understand that you can live by your soul, by your ego, or by both. So once again, you switch it up. Sure, that Mars energy is going to tell you, don't compromise, don't give in. Hold fast to what it is that you think you deserve. Be a brat. But you ever notice that that voice goes completely quiet when you lose? Then it has nothing to say. It has no comfort to give you. So be careful. You also have Venus moving into Sagittarius. There's all the charisma. You can take a friendship and turn it into a riotous love affair if you want. As long as you both go into it knowing that it won't last very long. If that's okay, it's all okay. Mercury retrograde is a time for you to really clarify and get out of this headspace when it comes to how you want to be treated. And the first thing that's going to hit you, October 1st, today probably, is the hypocrisy of wanting to be treated a certain way by others when you don't show that kindness to yourself. We can't expect anyone to have more respect for us than we have for ourselves. I mean, we should be able to expect it but we can't. So, how do you want to be treated and where do you want to go next? And how do you want the people taking this path with you to treat you? If you've had issues with coworkers, business partners, romantic partners, family partners, and you just can't see yourself on the long journey with them, this is the time to tell them. 
Don't have to be dramatic about it. No one has to get upset. Doesn't have to be a big thing. But if you need to go your own way, Mercury Retrograde is gonna show you exactly why. And as of the 18th, you clarify those situations. And if that means that you go it alone, then that means you go it alone. Will everybody like this? No. But that's also a big theme with the retrograde. Do you need to be liked right now, especially when it comes to your money? Because I can tell you, the two have nothing to do with each other. So if you're conflating the two, if you need to be popular and rich, I have some harsh realities to let you in on. It's either now you think hard about your wealth, about the direction you take next, about your plans long term, let's say five years out, or you let other people decide for you. Because if they have too much say in your life right now, see, there's a difference between compromising on things where you need a resolution. There you compromise. There you don't let your ego speak for you. But when it comes to your partnerships that are controlled by you, that affect your money, and it's your decision only, that's where you don't compromise. You have a tendency to do it the other way around. Compromising on the things that you have complete power over and being intractable on the things where you don't have a lot of power. So that's something that needs fixing. And what is the best thing that could happen right now? The best thing is that you get your priorities straight and you start to focus on the only thing that matters right now which is your financial stability and security. Yes, being liked is wonderful, being loved is even better, being popular, being considered to be beautiful or smart or any of those things, yes, they're wonderful. We all love that. But you realize that this is exactly where your ego doesn't want you to be. When you get here, you don't make decisions from your ego. You don't make emotional decisions at all. When you're here, you make sane, practical decisions. When you're emotional, your ego decides and will always put you in a situation where you end up isolated without what you need most, which is this knowledge that you are worthy and deserving of all of these things. Now, let's not forget that she's also holding a falcon in her hand. It's hooded because at the moment she doesn't need it to see for her. But when she does, it's there. This is the vibe. If you want to, especially around the new moon, which is in five days, if you want to attract a stable new love. The new moon is the right time to do it. It's the time to think about what it is that you need to change. What happens when you're attracted to someone? How do you begin to change? How do you behave? How true do you remain to who you are? If you want stability with someone, they have to see the real you. They can't see that version of you that you can put on for years that makes them think you're one way when you're really not. You can't have people believing long term that you're perfect. Sure, maybe you'll last two, three, four years, but at some point they will realize that that's not really who you are. We put on that perfect front because we're smart enough to. We know what you like, we know what you need. And because we're chameleons and we're so adaptable, we can do it. But this is not the season to give others what they need. This is a season to figure out 
what you need and to do that you need to be completely yourself without any milavat is a urdu word it means without any mixing without any additives and when you do that when you show up as you are when you don't take that tempting road and adapt just because you can what you encounter are people who genuinely will fall in love with the real you now if you're loving who you are they're going to love who you are you don't have to be who they want you to be they will love you as you are they will connect with you as you are now when you start to feel that connection your first instinct is going to be hold on tight go back to my old ways go back to being super childish the way i used to be but the retrograde is like please don't make those mistakes again if see the reason we do this is because we know the show we're putting on so we know that we have to hold on really tight because it's theater so when the theater you know when the play ends and the stage is cleared what are we going to do so we have to cling but you can avoid this and you can avoid making mistakes that you've made in the past by just not putting on the show. They get a backstage look. See it that way. You're letting them see you backstage. You're not fighting. You're not having these egoic outbursts. You're not trying to control or possess anyone no matter how good they make you feel. And the coolest thing about that is that then they will continue to make you feel good because nothing is holding them back because they don't feel tricked or controlled they feel free this is a freedom that we have been learning to give ourselves throughout the year and i think we've come very far we have learned how to put the angry twin away we have learned how to open up and be vulnerable but we still have this adaptation urge within us it really comes out of a need to please others and to show them like a small child you know a um, a precocious child look what i can do look what i'm smart enough to know about you look how i can mold myself to what will make you happy but ultimately what happens there is we end up the ones telling our friends and our loved ones I don't know, but it seems like they don't want to make me happy. Well, they don't even know who you are. They have no idea what makes you happy. All they know is the version you've shown them that was based on the character study that you did. So, that's relationships, connections, love, friendships. Now let's move to money. If you have been putting out a lot if you have been receiving a lot of offers queen of cups and yet nothing has moved and you're looking back at all the work you've done and thinking i did so much i've worked so hard why are things at a complete standstill you may start to long for a time in the past where you felt like you had better luck it's not about luck the lack of motivation you feel the sluggishness you feel the dissatisfaction with the people around you they're not doing enough why aren't they doing more all of that has to do with this bevy of planets that have been retrograde and as they start to go direct you will realize that everything starts to move but it only moves if you decide to be flexible no it's not going to turn out exactly the way you want and if you press too hard especially when it comes to legality you may end up in a lot of trouble you may end up owing a lot of money you may end up in trouble with the authorities because you're showing with your lack of compromise you're exposing your guilt 
So what we want to do, whether we feel guilty or not, whether we are completely in the right, we still want to approach things with the spirit of how do we make this work? As long as you genuinely want to make things work between you and your coworkers, you and your business partners, whatever it is, it will work. But as soon as you feel yourself doing that thing that almost feels like you can't help it, like I'm talking, but I don't even know why I'm saying this right now, just remember what I'm saying, stop, stop. After the 18th, you calmly sit down, you reevaluate your team, you reevaluate everyone that you work with, work for, whatever it is, and you come up with a new team. You choose very specifically the people that you want around you, and you let everyone else go very nicely. Now, for a lot of us, that means our friendships. For many of us, it's friendships plus people we work with. For some of us, it's very close family members who, for one reason or another, we just can't seem to connect with properly. So, after the 18th, you choose your team without guilt. Don't do that thing to yourself where you know what has to be done and yet you feel guilty and don't want to be the bad guy. Like I said in the Scorpio video, be the bad guy. Be the bad guy. You're the bad guy anyway. You're going to end up being the bad guy anyway. At the full moon on the 20th, you will feel the full force of these dead weight partnerships. Ten of Wands, Ten of Swords. You will feel that disappointment, that pain of knowing that certain people in your life have done nothing but drain you, lie to you, manipulate you, take from you, steal from you, gossip about you, go behind your back and try to take what's yours. You will feel the full force of it at the full moon. Instead of getting upset, Instead of letting that Mars energy really get to you, instead, you're going to recalibrate. You're going to get calm. You're going to stop beating yourself up about what has happened and why didn't I know before and why didn't I do more. You're gonna stop all of that. And instead, you're going to recalibrate in a way that is better for you financially and better for you emotionally. And that's when it's okay to say to anyone who's made it through the culling process, I need to be able to trust you implicitly when it comes to money. And if I can't, I don't see a future for us. Anywhere where you have decided that you are the one who's right, and so you can be as unfair as you want because you have been hurt or you have been cheated or whatever it is. Anywhere where you decide that your bad behavior is acceptable, that's where it will cost you and it will cost you financially. Now, it's important to not start anything new until we get to Scorpio season. This is a time of thinking and planning and recalibrating. It's a time of calling the herd. It's a time of being the most genuine you that you can be so you can attract people who are genuinely attracted to who you really are. But it is not a time to try to create something long-standing, a new thing. That comes later. In terms of health, Around the 23rd, you may find that some nagging health problem has come back. It is very, very important that you get on top of it and figure out what is going on. If that means you need to go to the doctor or get acupuncture or change your diet, whatever it is, you need to get on it and you need to get on it right away. If I were you, I would not wait until the 23rd. I would start now. Okay?
take it very seriously. Now, there's one more thing here, and I think it's kind of funny. On the 9th, you have an opportunity to prove to yourself that you are not who you used to be. Yeah, I just did that. It was annoying me. You can on the 9th, you will have every opportunity on the 9th to make really a big mistake. A mistake like the mistakes you've made in the past. A mistake that will make you feel like you have made no progress. That everything that you have changed was for nothing because given the right opportunity, you slipped right back into being that chameleon and putting on a show. Don't do it. Regardless of how much it hurts others, which it will, it's you we're concerned about. It will hurt you to know that all the work you did was for nothing, that you learned nothing, that you have not made any real progress. When we make ourselves feel that way, we fill ourselves with shame and regret and we also belittle all the effort and work that we've been doing. So you know that you're not the same. You know you're much more comfortable in your skin. You know that you want something real. So on the 9th, when you are presented with something that is not real, and all you have to do is be a Gemini and get what you want, don't. Just don't. And what you'll find is that when you don't give in to that urge, the pride you will feel, one, the joy in your own progress, two, but also it bolsters your future progress. We are coming more and more out of this staged performance existence into reality. We get to be a real fleshed out person instead of just this mutable airy cloud that's here and then it's gone and no one can quite tell you the shape of it. Now we are filling out our edges and corners and we are real. We don't want to go back to this transitory, airy, here one minute, gone the other, existence. We don't want it because we know all the pain it causes us in other arenas. So when you have the opportunity to prove to yourself that you are more than your mistakes, that you are more than your worst vices, that you are more than your gifts and talents. See, that's what's counterintuitive about this. Our adaptability is a gift. It is a huge talent. It makes us incredibly good performers, artists, writers, speakers, and all the things you've heard. But it, re it really does wreak havoc on our personal lives. So we have had to learn, and I think 2021 has been a great exercise in learning how to compartmentalize that power and have it actually be a power instead of a poison. So on the 9th, you get the opportunity to take that power and once again turn it into a poison and drink it. But you're not gonna do that because you have nothing to prove and you don't need to change for anyone. You will be completely who you are. And if you're thinking, but who I am is someone who changes, okay. You changing, learning, evolving, changing the way you look, changing your style, changing your mind, changing what you're obsessed with or what you like the most or whatever, that's fine. But when it comes to interacting with others, especially those that you would like a genuine connection with, especially those that you would like to have a deep, real connection with, whether you're, they're your friends or your lovers, that's where we put that power away. Now you may be thinking, well, I don't know who I am without that power. I get that. But isn't it time you find out? How are you going to find out if you never try?
But what if they don't like me if I'm just myself and not adapting to them? Then they don't like you. And if they don't like you, I mean, obviously something's wrong there. They suck. Like, who would not like you? You're fun. You're smart. You're beautiful. Like, what's not to like? What they don't like usually is the feeling of being lied to and getting played. But if you're completely yourself and they still don't like you, what a wonderful way to sift the sand. What a wonderful way to get rid of anyone who does not deserve to be there. If you don't like me, listen, no hard feelings. You see what I mean? We are so driven by this need to get patted on the head, you know? You did a good job. You're so smart. You're so observant that when someone doesn't like us, especially if we're being completely ourselves, it's like this need we have like, no, but I could make you like me if I wanted to because I could act exactly the way that I know that you would like me to act and, and then you would love me. But I think we have too much pride to do that anymore. Why should we have to? You don't? You're not down with who I really am? When I'm not trying to be what you want me to be? Okay. I can take that as an indictment of me. I can get really low about it. I can beat myself up about it. Or I can be very protective of me. Well, I'm dope. And if I'm showing you how I really am, truly, and you don't like it, I guess that means you're not dope. It's too bad for you. What that's going to do is it's going to attract a very genuine energy into your life. Someone who sees you the way you really are and thinks it's hilarious, thinks it's amazing, thinks it's beautiful. And then you never have to put on a show for them again. But you will, but it'll be for fun because they'll know who you really are. Remember in The Aviator where he goes to Katherine Hepburn's house and she's acting like a completely different person and he gets so weirded out by it. He's so, he's so uncomfortable with it. He leaves, he walks out of the dinner or lunch, whatever it is. And when she comes and meets him outside, he says, I don't, I don't know who that was in there because it wasn't you. And she says, there's only one Kate. There's only one real Kate, that's your Kate. But that's not who she was in there. But he knew who she really was because she let him see it. And when he saw her put on that act for others, it wrecked his mind. He couldn't understand what he was seeing. What we want to do is we want to be that real Kate with everyone. We want to use our powers to our benefit, of course, but it's not going to get you out of trouble, not this month. It won't get you out of anything you've done that you have to pay for, not this month. And it won't bring you real love, not even from your friends. So, it's time to let people see what you're really like. And underneath the sexy and the beautiful and the smart is somebody even smarter. We dumb ourselves down so much for others. Much more funny, goofy, <laughs> mainly goofy, and actually very relaxed. Whenever I meet people and they say, oh, Geminis are so intense. Geminis are so all over the place. I'm like, wow, they were really nervous around you. They really put on a show for you because we're actually super chill. You know the other twin. The other twin is always just like, I'm not impressed and I'm not trying to impress you. Sorry. We're almost afraid to be that with people because... I don't know, is it because we're nice and we don't want them to feel what they should feel, which is, I don't think you're cool, I don't like you. I don't know what it is. We are naturally friendly, we don't want people to feel bad. 
but you've got to get it through your head that being who you are, if it makes people feel bad, if you actually accept how cool you are and that makes people feel bad when you act the way you really are, which is hella fucking cool, then that's okay. Then they need something less and they need to go find it quickly away from you. Okay? Good? Good. I love you so mucho. Hi, Gemini. Welcome to the second part of your reading. So, you are really open to receiving a lot because you have all this charisma and you have Venus moving into Sag, so you can attract a lot. One of the pitfalls of attracting a lot is that sometimes it goes to our head. And as people are falling at our feet, we are losing our hearts to them as well. Sometimes multiple people. And during this period of popularity and enhanced attractiveness, we can make some mistakes. Mistakes that we don't want to make anymore. Mistakes that we have grown past. Okay? So we want to win people over. And we maybe want to take a friendship further. But we don't want to dig our heels in about anything. And we have to be really careful because Mars and Libra is going to really promote that behavior. Which can send us into a pretty precarious place. Okay? We can become very stagnant in our thought process if we allow this stubbornness in. So the way forward is compromise. If there is no compromise there, then there is loss. Okay? If there is compromise and if your focus is where it should be, which is on creating value and knowing your value, everything will be okay. But whenever you make that egoic decision, the sadness is right there, ready to catch you. But you can see how the entire reading is about choices. If you choose to put your real self forward right now, it's favorable outcome after favorable outcome. Stability, self-love and love between you and others. If you choose to let your ego make the decisions, it is sadness at every turn. Okay? So wherever you feel yourself holding on too tight, wherever you feel yourself starting to play a role, wherever you feel yourself starting to make the mistakes you've made in the past, then remember what we're talking about now and get yourself back to your original self. <clears throat> Stop putting on a show. But that original self is allowed to grow and evolve. Original self doesn't mean we go back to our original flaws. The flaws we can evolve past. Okay, so being genuine doesn't mean unlearning. That's a very important distinction to make. If you dig your heels in about something legal, you are the one that pays for it. So you want to be as uncompromised, you, you want to be as compromising as possible. The more uncompromising you are, the more painful it will be. And especially when it comes to your finances. There is a lot of passion here. There is a lot of new love. But your thinking has to change before that new love can come to you. You've got to decide and commit to yourself to be you before this love can find you. It's there, but it's waiting for the real you to emerge. You know, one of the best ways that the real you comes out is when you talk about things you like. Uh, in the Huberman Lab podcast, yesterday I was listening to how 
when we talk about something we're genuinely passionate about or interested in, we get a hit of dopamine. And that makes a lot of sense to me because Geminis have a tendency to go off on rants about things that they really, really love. And you can see it in us while we're talking about the things we really love, how much of a rush it's giving us. And it's nice to know that there's an actual physiological explanation for why we like to talk about the things we love so much. I mean, you can't get me to stop talking about Dune. It's like annoying. But now I understand why. So tap into those parts of yourself that are super passionate about things, not because somebody else likes them or not because it'll make us look like this or that, just because we like them. That's your power, your originality. And yes, it does take us a very long time to find our own coloring when we can color ourselves in anyone's colors. But our true colors are so much more brilliant than any mask we can put on. And it's about time that we let other people see that. Don't you think? And when they see it, don't be worried that they won't like it. Don't be worried that they'll reject you. Because we're not doing it to get affirmation or to get anyone. We're doing it because it feels right and we've done the work and we should be proud of who we are. If it then brings us love, which of course, inshallah, it will, that's great. But if it brings you rejection, all that is is the universe sifting those people out. And that's great too. So there are really no downsides to this. Only that you have to break a habit, and if you've already broken the habit, it's about not going back to it, especially when it comes to interpersonal relationships. So be mindful, be yourself, be brave, of course. It requires bravery to be yourself. Resist the urge to don the mask. Let people see what's going on backstage. They'll only love you more for it. And don't be afraid of being vulnerable. Vulnerability is strength. And you have come a very long way. And you are much, much, much stronger than you used to be. So there's no need to be stubborn and petulant about anything. Communicate. Compromise. Be yourself and see what comes to you, okay? Good. I love you, love you, love you. Below you will find links to the extended where we shuffle and clarify all the cards you see before you. We also talk about the major arcana as archetypal energy and as the signs they represent. We do both. If you're interested in the extended, I suggest you check out Patreon where you can subscribe to the Gemini tier or the Gemini plus the Za tier, the Za being the motivational walks we do, where we are meditating and walking at the same time. They're very fun. We jump dimensions, which seems like something you would be interested in. If you are interested in a personal reading, please, please, please do not answer messages from people on Instagram who are pretending to be me, but the name, The Quietest Revolution, is misspelled. I will never solicit you for a reading. I will never message you for a reading. There's only one way to get a reading and it has nothing to do with Cash App or Venmo or PayPal or WhatsApp or anything else. There's only one platform and that is Cameo. And those are recorded seven to 10 minute long readings that you receive in your inbox. Or once a month we do live readings, which is like a FaceTime call. And that's all through Cameo. There is no other place where I do readings. So that link is below as well if you're interested. If you were having a look at my ring, this is the beautiful Empress ring, part of the Quietest Revolution Rings collection. And there is a link below so you can take a look at all the rings we have, the High Priestess, the Empress, and the World Ring. Aside from that, if you haven't joined the RevFam on Instagram at the Quietest Revolution, then you're missing out on the daily horoscopes, which are really fun. So come and join the fam. I love you, love you, love you, and I'll see you in the extended right now, and I can't wait for your Halloween look. 
Ooh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make you proud. Love you.